Thanks, Jake. Great interview. Welcome back to the WDBF World Championship here in Los Angeles. That was quite the nail biter you just commentated over there. Oh my goodness, that was, yeah, that was a super close match. There have been a few super close matches uh, in this tournament, but I think that one so far is the closest. And especially being such a low scoring game, that just means that those two teams were just so equally matched, the whole yeah. throw by throw. <laughs> yeah, we saw both teams uh, initially having some trouble finding the mark on their throws, but uh, the accuracy improved, but it's just the defensive play is so good from both sides. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we'll see if the uh, American men and women, sorry, just the women <laughs> against the Canadian women, uh, we'll see how, what kind of match we have there. I predict a higher score than four to two. Yeah, probably. I'm gonna probably. go on the record with that one. So It's still gonna be a very good competitive game. So what's coming up is USA women's against Canadian women. So I have had the pleasure of seeing a couple of Canadian games here hmm. and actually not seen, I think I've only seen one US game. The Canadian women are looking very strong this year. I have to say they are playing very aggressive in every game I've seen. They push the line. Even yep. if they only have one ball, they're up at the line, which is very unique style of play. So I think the US women have, have this cut out for them, but I know they're up to the challenge. Yeah, a lot of these players have played against each other as well. We've got uh, members of the Canadian team that will sometimes head south into the States for tournaments and, and vice versa with some of the Americans. So I know some of them have rivalries dating uh, back to tournaments in either country as well as on the international stage. Yeah. A lot of familiar faces on the other side of the court. Yeah, which is good. We'll see how strategically they do against each other. Just want to thank Jake for sending some well-deserved shade my way as I refer to <laughs> Captain Watson as Rob a hundred times in that last matchup when really his first name is Ryan. <laughs> Sorry, Ryan. Even though we're Facebook friends, I got that <laughs> super wrong. So, uh, yeah. Looks like the Canadian women are warming up in a unique way. Looks like a volleyball circle, which, hey, whatever gets you pumped up, I suppose. Yeah, this is a thing we've seen them do a couple of times here at this tournament that's, you know, like you said, it's a little bit different. A lot of teams will just kind of toss the ball back and forth the way the Americans are doing it. But Canada, some kind of volleyball variation here. It seems to have a mix of uh, volleys, bumps, and spikes at your friends. Yeah. So. <laughs> oh, and kicks. Lisa Morris sending that one skyward. Yeah, so even though, you, like you said, that these teams have matched up against each other before, there's a lot of new players on both teams this year, especially for the U.S. women. Um, as we can see here, Paige Peterson is on Team USA for the first time. Um, Karina Arias is on the team for the first time. She's got a big gun that I'm sure Canada hasn't faced off against yet. Um, a few other new players for the U.S. And it's going to be an exciting match. I think that these are very equally matched teams. They both got big arms. They both got big catchers. Yep. They're both very uh, metal hungry. Yeah, I think we'll see fairly similar styles out of both teams. I know Peterson has a windmill that can match anybody on Canada. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> It's always fun to see those go back and forth. I mean, Peterson also has a good overhand, so I yes. feel like, uh, <laughs> you know, she's a weapon. Big arms across the board. This might be the biggest armed team, two teams here for the women, women's yeah, division. I think, I think there's a good chance that's correct. So, yeah, a lot of it will come down to not just the velocity of the throws, but the accuracy, because um, it obviously doesn't matter how hard you throw it if you miss your target. So we are going to be looking for... Who can control the play at the middle of the net the best? Net, not net, the line. Who can control the middle effectively? Who can put those big throws to the best use? And who can take away space from their opponents? This is the last game for the USA women in the round robin, so I'm sure they're really wanting to take several points here, get the win to rank themselves better for bracket play starting tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon. So I, I know that they... Uh, They've had a few few losses here, a couple losses here, I want to say. So they're wanting another W on their record. Yeah, you want to finish strong, of course. I think, you know, they're, like we were saying, they are a metal-hungry team. They've got the talent to place in the top three for sure. So, Are the Canadian women undefeated so far in round robin? I know they beat Australia late last night. They beat Malaysia yesterday. Uh, Hong Kong I was the only one I, I didn't catch, but I heard it was a very close game. It wasn't. Hong Kong actually took it in a uh, sudden death tiebreaker. So, Oof. So, Nail biter. Yeah, it was very, very close. But 
Yeah, Hong Kong won it on a one-on-one -on -one in sudden death at the end to take it, I believe, 10 to 9. So. Yeah, there's a lot of very close games in this tournament. Going down to one-on-one -on -one in sudden death, you can't get closer than that. That is correct. So, And just as a note on some of the other courts, on court two we have the women's match between Australia and Italy starting up pretty soon. Court three, another women's match, Malaysia versus Hong Kong. And court four, a men's match, Australia versus Hong Kong. Australia didn't get much of a break there, did they? Yeah, I hope some of their players actually have had enough rest to uh, <laughs> take the court again. But they've got a deep roster. I yeah. feel confident. <laughs> so this is our third to last match of the night. So please stay tuned. A couple more games after this. Um, four, all four courts that he just talked about do have live stream cameras going for them. Only court one does have the commentary. So if you like to listen to us commentate and tell stories, please stay right here. But if your other, uh, if your countries are playing on one of the other courts, there is cameras going on them. There is sound, just no commentary. Yeah, although if you want, you can open this feed in another browser tab, keep the audio on, and then just <laughs> imagine that we're describing that game. <laughs> Might not make sense at certain points, but yeah. that's okay. And interestingly, on this court, following the USA versus Canada match, we will have the other USA versus Canada match. So first the women face off, and then the men. So I think a lot of the audience will stay right here then. <laughs> yeah, I would imagine there will be some pretty big overlap in, yes. the, in the people tuning in. Yeah. But this is definitely a rivalry match, both for the men and women. For sure. Just on the other side of the border. Yeah, it's hard not to have a good friendly rivalry <laughs> between the countries, I think. We'll try and keep it out of the commentary, but... Uh, <laughs> you can see uh, both teams kind of huddling up, although I think Captain Ritchie waiting to do her captainly duties at center. So she's not part of the team huddle right now. I think we talked about this briefly yesterday, but how active is uh, women's dodgeball in Canada? <laughs> it's pretty active in the middle right now. Um, <laughs> yeah, certainly in Toronto, where I play, there are, uh, there are quite a few co-ed leagues, but there are also, uh, Jen herself actually runs a series of women's tournaments. Um, they've been pretty successful in helping to develop uh, the, the talents and uh, skill set, I would say, of a lot of the women playing the sport today. Um, Jen's also, I believe, run a women's league at times. I'm not sure if it's running right now because Jen has been pretty busy with a lot of this, you know, national team stuff. But, mm -hmm. yeah, we've got a strong presence in Toronto as evidenced by the fact that a big chunk of the national team is from the Toronto area. That's great. It's so good to see the sport evolving and growing as much as it has, and especially for women in dodgeball. For sure. There's also uh, in Hamilton where Veronica Berry plays, there is a w at least one women's league that, that runs. I believe that one's with cloth balls. I could be wrong. Um, but I have seen pictures go up on Instagram from that league. So as he mentioned, there are several different kinds of dodgeballs for those who are watching at home. This tournament is with a foam ball. It's like a light foam ball that you can grip. There's not really a lot of air in it. Then there's cloth balls, like you just referred to. That's mostly what the European circuit plays with. It's literally a cloth ball. It's slightly larger than the ones that they're playing with today. It's kind of difficult to pick up. Usually pick it up by the, the label that's on it. And then there's also rubber balls, and that's, usually, that's the majority of what's played here in the United States um, at different sizes. And so rubber balls that are pumped up, kind of like kickballs you played with at, in recess when you were a kid. So di very different types of balls, which means different types of strategy that teams would play with and all, it's a whole, basically a different game completely, but uh, uh, all very fun and competitive, and it's good to be able to adapt and learn to play yeah. different types. And it's interesting how even even when the rules are pretty similar between, say, a lot of the rubber game and the foam game, uh, like you said, the strategy just different because of the way the balls move, the difficulty, uh, relatively speaking, of like throwing with them or defending with them uh, it can definitely affect the game. So, mm -hmm. But here we see the best of the best with foam, seven-inch foam balls in play. We are just about underway. Here we go. The Americans quicker to the ball there in the early and shot on Dubayam. with the first shot. 100% yeah, accuracy from the American women so far. <laughs> See that windmill throw though, finding the, finding the mark. And so the Canadians strike back. One and one. <laughs> 
It's aggressive, aggressive shot from O'Quinn. Americans figuring out what play they want to go with here. Canadians still just pushing that line. Yeah, we see Rowe right up at the line. Survives that initial volley from the Americans. It's like she's trying to draw attention of the balls coming from the other side. Yeah, I think that's part of how she wants to protect her teammates. Just, oh, that was hits on both corners. Leaving the Americans with three players left. Kate Gong, captain. Karina Amezcula in the middle and Rachel Rodia. You saw despite Roe being in the middle, that, that, that was a good throw toward Lisa Moore in the corner, but no luck. Now Barry comes up to the middle, faking hard. Rodia blocking though. Barry throws and misses. Oh, that was a good shot. Karina stepping off on that one. Yeah. Jackie O'Quinn recognizing a moment she could take. Ooh, that was a high throw from Jessica O'Quinn. That Rodia was under just by standing upright. Now Shauna Rowe has to defend with the sole ball again. Very aggressively up at the center line. Rodia not baking, biting on the fake though. Not baking either. <laughs> Canada is pushing that line, keeping America back, but Rodia, Rodia responds with a hit. Yeah, finally punished Shauna Rowe from playing so aggressively up at the center line. Yeah. Canada still with four players Ugh. and a catch, making the shift. One player left for America, five on the court for Canada. Kate Gong from the U.S. still left. Yeah, she's going to have to try and pull this one back. And you see Mora, Barry, and O'Quinn coming up to the line for Canada. Oh, and that trailing shot from Mora finds Gong. And and just can't, can't squeeze it. Yeah. And the first match goes to Canada. See how America can adjust here to that style of play. Canada's playing very aggressive. They are pushing the line consistently like we've seen before. They are not letting the fact that they only have one ball keep them at the back line at all. They are, playing, they are controlling the game so far. Yeah, and we've seen when Canada's been successful, that's very much been their, their game plan, just... Try to control that middle of the court. Try to uh, hit on those offensive chances. They definitely feel like a team that, when they're rolling, they're just, that's how they're going to do it. They're just going to push the pace and try to dictate what goes on in the game and dare the other team to, to beat them. And so now we'll see if the Americans feel they need to adjust anything after just one point. Looks Can't like always. Sorry. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, it looks like there's a few issues with the time clock right now. So. Refs are taking a moment with that, so we might have okay. a couple minutes here. Yeah, good call. So we see the American team taking advantage and having a little huddle. And I think we are just about ready to go. Interesting fact about Karina MSQ at number 77 that we can see right here. She's actually only been playing play dodgeball for about two years, and she is just the most natural, one of the most natural players I've ever seen. Wow. Um, making the national team here today. Um, she's got a cannon on her, maybe the hardest female thrower I've seen. Have a background in other sports then, perhaps? Yes, every sport, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. <laughs> there she is, showing that arm off, knocking by him out. And by um, not getting to play very much so far. Thanks for proving me on that, Karina. Yeah. <laughs> that was helpful. <laughs> well timed. Oh, on the back and forth, ooh. I think the only casualty there was Jess O'Quinn, who reached for a catch a little bit but missed. Great hit by Brianna London on that one, number three. This is London's second time playing at the world stage. She went to Australia two years back. Yeah, we're seeing some good accuracy from the Americans on this series. Good dodge in the middle by Rodia. Yeah, Rodia also returning to the team. Mm -hmm. Played in Toronto last year. Oh. oh, Peterson almost having that catch. Uh, showing a bit of frustration that she couldn't couldn't squeeze it, but Donche letting go. But that goes a little high. And so the Canadians are going to get to set up. Four balls strong coming to the line. I see the Canadians really pushing this line here. Oh, and we saw an underhand throw there. 
Oh, Barry oh. clinches it. Impressive catch by Team Canada. Uh, Barry really had to fight to gain control of that one, but good concentration. But now the Americans to the line, throwing it more and missing. Leaving it four on four, keeping it real close here. And there we see Byam hit out again. So far, not a lot of luck for her staying in as she's been targeted pretty aggressively by the American team. She's a familiar face. I'm sure a lot of yeah. them have faced her before, and they know they don't want to leave her in there alone in the end. Yeah, Amelie Byam has been on Team Canada. I think this is the third year for her. And she has a rocket of a throw as well. And that was a good throw. That was a, and that a was catch. And a catch by Brianna London. Azalea Donch getting hit out, bringing in Paige Peterson. Yeah, London showing great concentration to bring her teammate back there. Mora flying high to dodge that one. And now the Americans with that player advantage. <laughs> Cheeky throw from the back line, but yeah. <laughs> Mora just casually lifts a leg over it, so she saw that coming. Now Rowan Mora attacking. And, and finding one hit in the block. Out. Ooh. I think that was a reasonable choice not to take that shot because now they, the Americans have all the balls going for Mora, who goes with the old pancake dodge. Folding herself backwards in a way that makes my knees hurt yeah. just watching <laughs> I it. I feel like I aged just watching it. Throws toward Rowe, finding the mark. One player left for Team Canada. Yeah, Peterson coming back in and having that gun really making a big difference. Karina pushing her back. Oh, Mora looking aggressive, but that ball not finding the mark. She's got another one, though, in the corner. Seems like, seems like she prefers the right side. Let's see if uh, U.S. can close this out with a team throw. And we have Peterson and Amescua talking, or sorry, that's London. Mora missing. Now we see the windmill from Peterson blocked. Throws to Mora, she jumps. Oh, uh, and it looks like it connects. Good throw by Karina Mezcua. Yeah, she did a great job of waiting until Mora had committed to the dodge on the first two throws, and then, like you said, put that uh, put that big arm right on her as she landed. So definitely tying it. Oh, tie, that should be tying it up one one. Yep. The score will be fixed shortly. That was quick. <laughs> so thirteen twenty five remaining in the first half. We have a 1-1 match. We are anticipating something close, and so far, yeah. that's exactly. Proving us right. Yep. <laughs> We're off. The Americans a little quicker to the ball, and again, Amezcua. <laughs> throw by Karina Amezcua. Not wasting any time getting that cannon out. And that's a big advantage if your team can uh, start with a 6-on-5 player edge every time because you've got so much speed getting to the ball and so much confidence from a player like Amezcua in hitting that shot. And Barry letting go on that second. Oh. Oh. Very close catch by London on that one. Oh, and there we saw O'Quinn trying to find Amezcua while she was unprepared. Those throws toward Barry missing as she drops low. Donche calling the play. And there we see those throws at Barry missing as she goes low. Team Canada with possession. Right, nothing Duke so far. Oh. Good uh, agile dodging there from Rodia. Pushing the line as well. Yeah, that's good. You don't want to let Canada control that line the whole time. So mm -hmm. whatever the Americans can do to hold it themselves. Great shot from Rodia onto Barry. Four on five. Advantage. America. We see a hooking shot across, missing. Rowe avoids that ball. Ooh. The ball retriever 
playing hard to try and find that one before it rolled onto the American side, but just had a little too much mustard. Team U.S. pushing the line. Oh, and Mezcua hit out. That's a big out. And O'Quinn and following up, one. knocking Rodia out as well. That's a big shift of momentum. That is indeed. It's Canada was down in players, now they're up in players. Oh, good dodging from Peterson and O'Quinn. Possession with the America. So they're going to try and connect there, and it looks like, yeah, they find O'Quinn. Doncha dodging the shot from Oqu the other O'Quinn nice sister. Nice throw by Donch, but doesn't quite connect. Yeah. Rowe going low and blocking. Now we're down to three on three. And we had a few shots there from the Canadians. Three balls total invested, but no payoff so far. Nice hit. Team pro by Donch and Peterson. Yep. Second one connecting. That yeah, was Donch again showing that accuracy on the follow ball after acquainted. Oh, oh beautiful awesome. throw by Richie. <laughs> Richie just curved that one around so casually, and I don't, I don't think that uh, her target even saw it coming. Now both balls going toward row in the corner. It looks like they're uh, trying to leave Richie in alone at the end. Which is an interesting strategy. Peterson threatening the windmill, but that one was not her finest. She'll go again. Yeah. <laughs> and there we see a big grab. Bringing in Brianna London, 14 U.S. Beautiful catch by Azalea Donch, U.S. Cap captain. Yeah, now it's just Jen Ritchie against three. Yep. And it's a hit. And I believe that was Donch's throw that connected too, so big conversion from Azalea Donch. Bringing the score to one to two favor of US. This is a close game. They're very equally matched teams. They play similarly and they've been having to adjust with that. Oh, we are seeing some good back and forth some clutch catching on that point, turning things around in the favor of the American side, who now have a little bit of momentum for themselves. And we've got a little bit under 10 minutes to play in the first half, so a lot of game to go. So now we're going to get started and see who can get point number four. And we're off. Once again, Amezcua connecting, this time with Berkeley. I think that's 100% for her on the start. And by a missing. Now Gong calling a play. The Americans come to the line. London letting go, but bouncing that one low. Now we see a windmill toss from O'Quinn. That one doesn't land. We see the Americans coming to the line. But again, no such luck. O'Quinn missing on the return shot. And now the count is going to be back on the Americans as Canada tries to hold enough of the center court to force a bad throw. It wasn't a bad throw. Didn't connect. And now it's Canada's turn. Oh, we see a good attempt on to buy him there, but uh, that time Enstrom not quite able to find the mark. So see big throws from Canada coming now. London. No, sorry, that wasn't London. That was Amescua again. Almost found the catch as she bent backwards, but the ball just had enough momentum to carry over her and out. Now we'll see a bit of a throw there from, uh, I believe that's Rodia. Now Canada back on offense. See the throw, doesn't connect. Ooh, two throws on to Bayam. One of them finds her. 
Rodia now holding the line. All right, not so much there. London also supporting her team by trying to control that middle area. And I think we did have a bit of a hitch with uh, stream one, the one we're on. Hopefully it should be back for everybody now. Ooh. see what happens now as the Americans come to the line we see the Canadians still showing aggression the throw from Gong missing a counter from O'Quinn she evades the counter onto her as well Rodia controls the line as the ball rolls back her way and now Team USA comes up and attacks the counter from O'Quinn missing Oh no, oh, sorry, O'Quinn hits Gong out, but then the counter from Rodia onto O'Quinn connects as well. We have just Richie and Mora for Canada against three for the Americans. Mora takes a shot. Rodia threatens to counter pretty hard, but elects not to take it, and her team's setting up instead. Richie now tries to go across court onto Rodia. London with a fake, but now the Americans are going to set up once more. And that is two throws toward Mora, but she is... I think she may have hit the back line there because I don't think she was actually hit by any of those balls. And now it's just, just Captain Richie again goes across. Seems to be a recurring pattern here, Richie being the last one in. But then again, yesterday we saw her pull out quite a few amazing catches to help bring her team back and support them. Yeah, she's pretty used to being in this scenario, and we see, ooh, we've seen how calm she is. Rodia attacking, second throw from Richie, doesn't find the mark, so Rodia doing her job of baiting out lower percentage throws from Jen Richie. And now we see the Americans coming up. But there are the throws from both Rodia and London. As Enstrom holds, Richie not, not even showing a lot of respect for those fakes. Going on to Rodia. Missing, and there's another one toward Rodia and missing. Rodia, ooh, good Finished shot. Finishing it out, pumping up her team. Rodia is playing phenomenal today, I have to say. She is uh, really uh, help ch changing the momentum for her team, keeping them positive. They're yeah. feeling pretty good right now, it looks like. Oh, I agree. She's... Uh, She's connecting on quite a few throws as well, so that is morale boosting. And now the United States up 3-1. to one. Still a lot of dodgeball left. Look like there's about five minutes left in this first half. So I, knowing Canada, they're going to come back swinging. They are going to push that line. That's like their secret sauce, it seems to be. They're going to play really aggressively is what my guess is going to happen next, and we'll see how the U.S. responds. Yeah, so far the U.S. has absorbed the pressure from Canada quite well and has been able to find some good counter hits. I think the Americans are doing a good job of absorbing that pressure and then taking some of that energy and throwing it right back at Canada. Uh, they've been able to neutralize the O'Quins, which uh, possibly the two uh, most dangerous corners on the Canadian team. And now we'll have to see whether either team feels the need to adjust. I feel like the Americans probably don't need to. They've taken three of the first four points. They've got finally got a, a mojo going. That was something that I know that they were uh, having a little bit of a hitch trying to find, like really gel and figure out how they connected as a team. Well, a lot of these players know each other really well, but maybe have not necessarily played together in the past. Um, and the first time that they've really all been on a court in a competitive way was yesterday morning or <laughs> afternoon. So. Um, this is It's taken them maybe a little bit to find their hitch, but it looks like they're getting a, a bit of a mojo flowing. Yeah, I'd say they, they seem to have pretty good chemistry right now. Let's see if Amezcua can hit again. Ooh. Fake out. It's been 100% so far when she takes that shot, but this time elects to hold it. You see the throw from London. And now by him calling the play, Barry sharing the words to her corner. And neither of those throws find the mark. We 
You see those Canadian corners back up and aggressive. Mora. Oh, Mora not able to protect Jessica O'Quinn there. But Canada with five balls, sorry, four balls. It's going to come back up to the line. We see the Americans super low in that crouching position. Uh, I think that ball may have connected. Yeah. Yeah, looks like it there. did. But the Americans, all of them going low like that, kind of forces Canada to make good throws and, uh, and actually get them right on target at low targets. So. Absolutely. Oh, and I think Rowe, yep, hit out as she l landed from the jump. So well-timed throw there. Team Canada with possession. Four on four. To the line. Nothing doing. The counterattack going across court. But Rodia not able to find that shot onto O'Quinn. She's pushing the line, though. She's not letting Canada control that line. And they yep. think that's really a, a big advantage for the United States right now. Ooh, and those balls missing. Yeah, I agree. You see Rodia still up the furthest of her teammates, and I think she wants to, yeah, like you said, control the line as much as she can too. Don't let Canada control that space. Gong getting very low there. All right, Rodia clearing a ball and blasting and Mora. A beautiful hit. And Rodia coming up big again. Three on three, got a bit of an exchange there, keeping it really close. The throws toward Bayam, get her, but Two gone from the American side as well as Gong and London hit out. Rodia left in alone. And there we see the windmills not working out. Rodia still safe. Looking catch there. That was interesting from Rodia. She put the ball down initially, looked for the catch, but they were all fakes. And then when she grabbed the ball up again, all three throws came in on her, and she, yep. I don't know, maybe froze up a little bit there, so. Tightening the score. Canada takes that one, making the score two to three. It's just a one-game differential here now. Still a lot of time left. A lot of game left. Looks like Canada was trying to push that line a bit. Rodeo, the, the hold yeah. fast for the U.S., not wanting to give it up, but... Those look like they're little, getting a little bit more of their momentum back. Yeah, but I like what Rodia is doing. She's she's forcing Canada to really earn that center line. So let's see if Amezcua takes it this time. She does, and she actually misses. Not used to saying that. <laughs> Possession with the U.S. Rodia takes it. Not quite connecting. And now we have Bayam and Barry collaborating in the middle. The throw comes out toward Amezcua. Steps off. And now we see Canadian wings trying to hold that center line. And I think O'Quinn was fine, but those were a couple of close calls. Four balls up for Canada. And those throws missing. Third one from Byam, and she's countered hard. Good ball exchange there for both teams. Yeah, but now Rowe with the only ball for Canada as the American. Oh, Rowe throws oh. it and absorbs a <laughs> bunch of punishment. Yeah. <laughs> Canada now with only two, and the Americans currently in control on this point. And they graze Jessica O'Quinn. Putting those extra balls to good use. Now we see London in the corner. And Rodia hit out of the air. So Canada brings this back a little bit more. But the Americans still with a four ball and four player advantage. Looking for Barry but missing. Three yeah. on four, possession to Canada. Renegade ball on the court. Enstrom chucks that back to the proper court. You see those Enstrom hits. Enstrom steps out on that hit. Three on three. Yeah, so another close point. 
Yeah, they're looking for O'Quinn in the corner. Mora blocking. The return shot does not find the mark. Ooh. There's the whistle for sudden death. Oh, boy. This is close. This is exciting. Three on three, sudden death. Both teams are really going at it here. And we saw the Canadians really trying to uh, spend the balls in hand, knock some players out before sudden death to make it a little easier on themselves. But now we are back to no blocking. So that, that ball in your hand will not protect you in this mode. We see some aggression back and forth. Both throws missing. We got the three on three again toward London, but Mora missing. And Doncha hits out O'Quinn, but oh, Mora with the grab. Catch. Mora oh, with the block. Blocks. That is such a natural instinct for a dodgeball player to want to block a ball when you have a hit ball in your hand, but that just cost her, her out there. Yeah, London and Byam squaring off now. London lets go, missing. Counter from Barry misses. Byam now comes to the line, doesn't take it. Yeah, you can see Mora go down in the blocking position with that ball in front and then regret. London now with no ball. Doncha throwing, finds by him, but gets hit out by Barry. It's a 1v1, sudden death, no blocking. London, no ball. Barry armed, but not finding the mark so far. Ooh, hits the shagger, I think. London still really needs a ball. Barry has one. London throws it. No hits. From, from her knees almost, Barry letting go. London this time missing high. Barry has control. Nope. Now it's even again. She London scrambles no out of the ball. way of that throw. Yeah, Barry missing. Now going to try and... Oh! oh! Wow. Very close. Barry Very coming close. up clutch to tie this one up. London got her hands on that too, so... She was right there, ready for it. Great play by both teams in that game. Going into the second half, I just don't know what's going to happen next. Yeah. Well, we did say, again, we said this would be close, and there is no disappointing us from these two teams. So very close, very hard to say who's got the edge. I mean, Canada won the last two points. Uh, do you think that gives them the, mo the momentum? Possibly, yeah. I mean, definitely they, they're probably feeling pretty good right now, but it's not like it's any game's been a blowout. They've all been very close games, one-on-one, -on -one, two on one. There's not been any games that there's been more than a few people on any either side of the court. So I think both teams really have to like stay calm and concentrate and go into the second half knowing that the other team's coming for them. Yeah, it's, it's I mean, you're glad you can close out those points when it's just a one-on-one, -on -one, but you also know how close it, it came to going the other way. So... Um, I mean, I'm sure Canada's glad they forced the tie at 3-3, three to three, but uh, I'm sure if they had their way, they would be winning very decisively. Yes. But I don't think that's going to happen I on too many points yeah. here. So. we got another 20 minutes, and if it's as close as the first 20 minutes, this is going to be a nail-biter all the way until the end. So yeah. if, uh, if you're Team Canada, what's your, what's, what are you thinking right now? What, what is your strategy going into the second half? Well, I feel like part of it, uh, they've been targeting a Mezcua when they get a chance. They've been trying to eliminate her because she's been so accurate with that throw. Uh, Rodia as well, when they get a good shot at, at, uh, at her, I feel like Canada's looking to just take her out of the game. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, I think Canada's really got to watch for those counters because uh, London, Rodia, like, they've been hitting those counters when they, when they see those opportunities. So you either have to do a better job of suppressing those counterattacks or getting out of the way when they come. Absolutely. And meanwhile, we'll see if the Americans mix it up too much. Looks like Ashley Cook in for U.S. Yeah, she's number 18. She's, ooh. And Amescua out right off the, you're right, right off the yeah. jump. They, they want to get her out. They don't want to keep that arm in the play. Yeah, I think they recognize how much damage she's been doing, so. Yeah, now and they. And one out for Canada as well. Yeah. So Ashley Cook, no stranger to the Toronto players. She's, uh, she's come up with some of her Boosh teammates to quite a few tournaments in our area. Always a pleasure to play against her. So what do you think uh, U.S.'s strategy should be going yeah. forward with this one? Well, if they can bait in those kinds of throws and avoid them that way, I think that's pretty helpful. Uh, yeah, I think the Americans, if they can kind of bait some of those throws from Canada, uh, use the Canadian aggression against them. 
and then use, like, they had five balls there. They were able to put several onto Barry and eliminate her. Yep. I think that's working really well for them, so. Absolutely. Team throwing. Yeah, so just get that ball advantage by trying to take advantage of the aggression that the Canadians are showing. See Richie holding the line and letting that ball come back into Byam's hands. U.S. looks ready for a catch here. Ooh. Yeah, there was see. <laughs> see the my bad signal from Enstrom there. Now the throws toward Cook, missing. Oh, good snap onto Moore. Beautiful play by Rodia. She has such a quick release on that throw. She has a really quick release. I've been on the, unfortunately, been on the receiving end of that release yeah. more than once. You see Ashley Cook. Holding the line, too. She has some of the most terrifying fakes, I think, of any player I've played against. I know. It hurts my arm watching them. By him dodging. But five strong for the Americans now, so. And they find by him. Richie's got most of the balls on her side, but most of the players are on the other side. So does Richie go for a hit or a catch here? Ah, she gets a hit. Yeah, taking out Enstrom. Richie's got that deceptive throw. It's kind of just like a flick of the wrist sometimes. Oh, and you see her going for Doncha there, but it's very confident. She's willing to let go of that second ball and just look for the catch. Both throws missing there. Yep. So Cook with big fakes. Throw from Richie missing. Looking for Doncha as well. Cook. Oh. Drops that into the ground. Richie waiting on her knees, but the Americans don't want to take that shot when they know that they might just give up a catch that way. Richie throws from her knees, makes the grab. Three on two, very different game now. Yeah, bringing Mora back. And now we'll see what happens. The counter from Donch onto Mora doesn't work. Rodia clears that Big ball. jump. Putting in those box jumps in the gym. I don't know, I assume. <laughs> she just levitates. Yeah. Pretty sure it's her superpower. Mora jumping as well. Big fakes. Rodia is not going to let her take the line easily, though. Now Canada to the line. Throws to the opposite sides. No such luck. Rodia bounces one in front of Mora. Richie sends the second ball over to Mora, and now the Americans are going to come back up to the line. Mora going aggressive. Rodia baits her down to the ground, but decides not to take it. They're being, the U.S. is playing very cautious here. They do not want to throw another catch. Yeah, both Mora and Richie have shown catches. Ooh. Nice hit. I think that was two hits on Mora, one to the knee and then one to the head. So, so now they've got to be careful not to let Richie get another catch. She is pulling them in. Basically avoid all balls going into catching there. They gotta be very careful. And they connect. Great finish there. Yeah, that time they made sure they did not want to let Richie, like you said, pull in another ball, but they connected with two good solid throws. And uh, they go up 4-3 in the match. I would say very well played by the Americans there. 15 minutes left in the half. Still lots of time. It was just neck and neck, though, with all these plays. Some loud guy in the frame there, bottom right. <laughs> and Amezcu <laughs> faking, but you see, Moore has to respect that fake just because of how good Amezcu has been off the rush. Now the Americans' burdens on them to throw. You see a cross court. Doesn't find the mark, and O'Quinn stepping up. Canada regroups in the huddle. Shares the plan with everybody on the team. Oh, and and that was a catch, I believe. Yeah, Cook making that grab. And I think it came after the initial hit, so even if a player had been eliminated, they were back up to full strength. Good block from Cook. Playing well since she got added to the game, but Doncha hit out in the foot area. Oh, and Quinn, the favors returned her way. 
four on four. Oh, taking out Richie early on. They don't want to leave her in alone at the end again. And they also get O'Quinn there on the other side. Some good, confident throws from the Americans. Now it's just Barry and Moore. Ooh, and Cook just barely staying in bounds there as she dodged backward. Yeah, so for those watching at home, that back white line that they're all trying to avoid is a hard out. What that means is that if they accidentally step over, that is still means that they are out. And that's not the way you want to go out in such a tight game like this. You want to stay alive, stay in, compete for your team, and stepping out is a, not, not the way you want to go. Touching that line means you are out. So exactly. Not the way you want to go out. You want to force the other team to earn it. And we see those throws missing. So now Team USA back on the offensive, trying to grow their four to three lead. And they find Moore, so it's just Veronica Berry. Against five strong for the Americans. She goes toward Cook, pops the throw, big fakes. Big fake. Cook from her knees. Not her finest throw, I'm sure we'll see better soon. Now we see Barry going across, and then the Amezcua looking looking to make her pay, but just, just fakes there. Rodia on the other side. Barry throws toward Amezcua. The charge counters. Find her. And he hits. So Rodia, that is a tough ball to block. Rodia and Amezcua, both two nasty throws coming, coming Barry's way, and she's not able to survive it. So Both very quick releases from both of those ladies, so Definitely. it's really hard to read and know what direction it's necessarily going to come from. The U.S. taking the lead, pulling out a little bit of a spread here. Five to three. Thirteen minutes left. That's still lots of play. Yep. Uh, that last game was just over two minutes, so a lot can still happen. Yeah, and we've seen a lot of these points be really close, so I fully expect we'll see more close points. I doubt either team is going to be able to run away with it. So, I assume a timeout was called here because we definitely have a lot of extra time being spent in the huddle by both teams. I didn't see the timeout signal being made, but typically that's the only way you get so much time between points. We apologize about any issues that may be of happening at the live stream. We are back online, as you guys may have seen. Please feel free to send any questions, any other things you'd like to know. We're reading them, and we can uh, answer them here from the live stream. Seeing the team set up again after a lengthy huddle. The Americans having just taken a 5-3 lead. There we go again. Right off the bat, Mezcua taking that hit. Yeah, she held off the last couple times. I yeah. didn't see her holding off another time. Yeah, still something like a 75-80% success rate for her on those. She has got quite a release. See a throw at Barry, connecting. A little bit from her blind side, so well taken. And now Canada is going to try and, ooh, they find a Mescue again. Seems to be target number one for Team Canada. I see why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's earned that respect. Throw toward O'Quinn, missing. Richie and Jess O'Quinn will confer in the middle, share the plan with their wings. And that throw from Mora bounces short. And she yields the corner to O'Quinn. And the Americans to the line. Doncha looking for O'Quinn, missing, but gets countered by the twin protection. You can hear the Canadian fans liking that one. Got quite a big crowd watching this game right now. Both the men's U.S. and Canadian teams watching and supporting their girls. A lot of back and forth here, and I think Enstrom survived. 
London steps off. Yeah. We're down to four on three. Count on the Canadian side. And we see the windmill toward Cook. She avoids it by going low. Four on three advantage to Canada. U.S. with possession. Yeah, Mora making herself a small target there. Now Canada back on the offensive. I see a windmill toward Cook missing. Counters back and forth. Rodia and Mora trading. But I think that might have been Enstrom's ball that knocked Mora out. But again, while they have the numbers advantage, I'm sure Canada's okay with doing the one for one. About 10 minutes left in the game. Enstrom with a block. Count is still on Canada as they have the extra player. That shot missing high as Enstrom stays low. Now Quinn threatening the huddle. But America coming back to the line, finding the shot onto Jackie O'Quinn. Just misses. Making, the, making it a 2 2. Ashley Cook and Edstrom left still left in for the U.S. They look for O'Quinn. And they stop the clock for something. It's like a ball, maybe. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's the net frame again. I think sometimes that ball just manages to hit it in a way that just kind of pulls the pipe out. Uh, just in the right spot. Seems that way. It seems to be happening on that side a lot, unfortunately. So we'll have to see if there's a way it can be secured a little more tightly, perhaps. Shaggers do make a huge difference in a game like this. Having really quick, accurate shaggers can mean getting that ball possession just, just that second faster that could give you the advantage to be able to block, to be able to throw sooner. Having really quick shaggers like both these teams have, I think, are, are giving them a, a little bit of an edge. Yeah, and you can see that they're wearing knee pads too because sometimes you just, I mean, when you're lunging for the ball, you might end up dropping down and you still need to stay protected just like when you're on the court. I do not know what this conversation is about because uh, it looks like we've got the coaches in from both teams. We've got uh, Alex Svetlovsky, who I believe is the rules official uh, for this event. He's in there. All the officials, all, all the captains. The officials. Guy with the camera, you know, just, <laughs> just everybody. <laughs> We're missing out, Terry. <laughs> I know, someone send a sideline report. Do we have those sideline reporters? <laughs> we didn't get an invite to this party. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, we'll, we'll expect a written decision shortly. There must have been some very close call. And with a tight game like this, one big call could swing the momentum, give a point to you know, Canada that will go with it, closing the gap here. There's still almost 10 minutes left in the game, so a lot can still happen. Yeah, this point being two on two is important. I mean... The Americans can win it. They go up six to three, and then they can afford to play a little more slowly, a more controlled game, maybe weather the aggression from Canada. Whereas if Canada wins it and brings it to a 5-4, then I think you you need both teams to just keep playing uh, whatever game they feel like gives them the best chance at any individual point. So we see <laughs> Gong and Richie mock trash talking at the center <laughs> line. Nice little hug at the end. So curious what's happening in there. Yeah, whatever it is, it's a long conversation. It seems to be hard to resolve. If anyone's curious about the scores happening at the other court, there are uh, there's a sheet that you can link to from the Facebook page that will give you the current standings, the score report. Um, everything going on there. So that's on the USA Dodgeball Facebook page. You can find that link to find out what the standings are going into tomorrow. 
Yeah, everybody does make the playoffs this time in a change from last year. We're sorry, you two commenters. We don't know why what, what's going on either. We'll let you know as soon as we find out. We get a bonus official coming over too. Here's a question that we can maybe answer. It says, will Terry suit up for playoffs? No. Okay, quick answer. That was a quick uh. answer. <laughs> I, uh, you know, I'm not actually a very big fan of suits, and it's it all because it's all because of the tie. I don't like wearing ties. I think they're a weird addition to any outfit, personally. No disrespect to our co-commentator uh, Bill. He, uh, I think he looks sharp. It's just not my cup of tea. So one interesting tidbit about this. Canadian women's team. Quite a few of them qualified uh, for the national team tryout tournament on a team together. They had a stacked lineup that ran really well through the uh, qualifying tournaments happening in Ontario and made it onto the national team together. I think now that this issue is getting resolved, we're getting an update, which I think Elisa will bring you shortly. But we're getting back to the game in a second as well. Two on two. And there we see a throw toward Cook missing high. So we are back in session. I can give a little bit of insight. It's still a little fuzzy what just happened, but um, there was a discussion about the code of conduct. So every player agreed when they joined this tournament to go along with the code of conduct that this is, yes, it's a competitive tournament, but it's a friendly tournament, um, and I guess there may have been a possible violation of that code of conduct in the middle of this game, so the refs came together to understand there was no card called, um, so that would have been the warning, but there was, there was a warning given to both sides that uh, to be mindful of that agreement they made. Big block and counter from Cook there, eliminating O'Quinn, and once again, Jen Ritchie is the last player remaining on the Canadian side. We will elaborate a bit more on the code of conduct once this point winds down. Richie electing to go with no balls, making one. Was that a catch? I think that was a catch. A catch and out? So she was definitely hit. Barry came in. I, I thought Richie made a catch, but I am not sure. I could see Ashley Cook saying she thought one shot bounced. Maybe, maybe she's saying that the one that ended up in Jen's hands was a bounce. If it was a catch, then we'll see a one-on-one -on -one between Enstrom and Barry. Barry walking off. That might just be while they talk it out. Very close game. Yeah. <laughs> Ref's getting a lot of action, a lot of screen time here today. Richie throwing out some playful trash talk. And the game does go to the U.S. Yeah, so... That is a significant lead for them. Six to three with just under nine minutes remaining in the game. We'll see if the Americans now try to slow it down a little bit. Both teams getting lined up here again for the 10th game. Let's see if uh, they go for the pitch back and the swing again. And there she goes yet again. Karina going for that swing, but looks like she gets sniped out in the process. I believe you're right, Terry. That is their uh, number one target for the U.S. team. Team Canada with possession, making a team call here.
four on four still. Oh, and the hit, but double hit, got an exchange. Yeah, just getting a little bit of an update on the last, the last kerfuffle there on the previous point. We'll get to when we have a break in the action. Ooh, there's a grab from Cook. Catch and out. Yeah, she did go b over the back line there as she bent back, but I think she had control of that catch first. Rodia also goes out, but Emezcua does come back in with Brianna London. Oh Karina God. making that hit, bringing it to two on two. Good block from Emezcua there. These two really do love playing together, so it's exciting to see them here at the end. Yeah. Big blocks, both of them. Yeah, now no balls. Oh, big dodge. Yeah. Very matrixy over there. Yeah. <laughs> and we see the O'Quinn sisters. We'll see if they load up the O'Twin mill here. There's one jumped over. You said they're twins, right? They are. Good block. See if they can get some telepathy going, some twin connection. Well, they find Jackie O'Quinn, and now it is just Sister Jessica remaining. Americans faking, baiting a throw. But Jessica O'Quinn, still two balls, plus a bonus red ball on the court. Both those, of those missing. And there we see the windmill toward. Ooh, missing and now no balls in hand. Avoided. Avoided the returns. No. She got grazed. It's another. US closing that one out, making the score 7 3. T really taking the lead here. Yeah, they've showed great ability to actually close these close points. That's been the big difference here. It is. They Both teams are playing really great games. It's just about who is able to push through right there in those final moments to get the W. And we'll quickly try to get in the, the official update on what happened with all the officials at center uh, two points ago now. Uh, I've had the clarification that there were some unofficial warnings issued for things like uh, ball shaggers stepping onto the court or coaches stepping onto the court. No yellow cards issued, which is the more severe uh, official style of warning, but just, just kind of uh, unsporting conduct, unofficial warnings issued. So those can lead ladder up to worse penalties later on if those issues persist. Good to be mindful of as we go into potentially more intense games tomorrow in the knockout rounds. Yeah, this is just for seeding these kinds of matches. And starting tomorrow, we get into the ones where you lose and you end up going home. Mm -hmm. Or at least waiting for your flights. <laughs> so now we have five and a half minutes left. Canada is going to need to close some points pretty quickly if they want to have a shot at this match. Meanwhile, the Americans can just keep doing what they're doing. Oh, Amezcua not quite able to catch that one. It was a good low windmill from O'Quinn. Who threatens to do it again. And we can actually see some of the time now, Canada is sometimes holding a corner ball or a ball toward the corner, but uh, not actually all the way at their corner player. They're doing it with the one inside player sometimes. Just a little adjustment. As we see Mora doing exactly that, where Bayam is actually in the corner itself. Mora dodging. Bayam hit high, though. Big hit by Brianna London. Yeah, that shot finding the mark, reading that Bayam was maybe thinking jump. We see a shot toward Enstrom, but still in it. U.S. with possession, coming together for a play. They got five balls. Yeah, Barry in the middle gets oh, hit hard. Big hit. And now Quinn, both of them going to try and take the middle back, but the Americans with the initiative here. Yeah, 
And that throw toward London finds her. Oh, Rodia hit out as well by Mora. Sure Canada could use a little more of that. Mora that, a little Mora Mora. <laughs> we see O'Quinn hit out on a good outside throw from Cook. Big fakes from Cook while Donja throws along with Enstrom. O'Quinn tries to retaliate. Pushing Enstrom. that line. She's yeah. pushing that line, not letting Canada have their play their usual MO. I think that's what's been the big difference here. For sure. It's helped knock Canada a little bit off their rhythm, I think. Cook with a good throw. Counter attempt onto O'Quinn missing. And O'Quinn was ready to try and find that catch. But Enstrom put it a little too high. And I'm not sure how Cook got knocked out there, but it's just two for the Americans. Enstrom gets tagged. It's just Azalea Donch. Azalea Donch, captain for the U.S. team. And no stranger to the world stage. She's been at this tournament several times now, representing the U.S. A very experienced and versatile player. As we see, a good blocker. She plays on a team here in the U.S. called Pop That with several other Team USA players. So she's uh, experienced with these high-pressure situations. Ooh. Ooh, that almost looked like a ricochet catch. Yeah, it went toward Richie, but uh, out of reach, I suppose. And Mora hit out the good high shot from Donch. Donch going aggressive, missing O'Quinn. Donch, with only two minutes left, is well aware that you know, she can go for the win, but she doesn't have to be quick about it because the pressure is on Canada to convert here. One minute, 52 seconds remaining on the clock. Look, Donch looks for O'Quinn, misses O'Quinn, fakes the wind, wind up. Possession on Canada side. See a couple of throws not finding the mark. And with a minute and a half remaining, Doncha absorbs that pressure from O'Quinn. We switch sides with Richie. Doncha goes oh. for O'Quinn and tags her. Finds her right in the gut. O'Quinn went high, but so did the throw. 1v1. Richie just seems to be a familiar spot for her. Last one on the court for her team. And 60 seconds remaining. Doncha using that clock smartly. <laughs> Looks like that may have hit Donch on that one. Giving Canada the point. Yeah, I, to be honest, I'm not totally sure, but it, I think you're right. I think Richie just found her with that throw timed at the same time as Donch let go. So, Richie just coming up clutch there. 46 seconds left on the clock. This will likely be the one that would take us into sudden death. No blocking. Yeah, so I think the best Canada can really hope for is to improve their point differential because making up two points before sudden death against this American team with 46 seconds on the clock. That's probably a little too much to ask. But, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean anything towards Canada's rankings. I mean, it, it could, but it's, it'll be, I'll be interested to see what happens tomorrow because Canada still beat Malaysia, still beat Australia, which were two teams that beat the United States. So it's a little bit of a flip-flop here. So it might come down to point differential for some of these teams on where they end up being ranked in the morning. Yeah, in terms of record, I think it's been actually, there have been at least two losses for each women's team, I believe. So, yeah, point differential might end up being quite important. And we did see Rodia hit out early. Canada still with five. They send a couple of throws in a couple directions. And now we're in sudden death. No blocking. So, 
We will see which team can do better in the no blocking stage. I feel like there are so many arms on both teams. Cook throwing immediately. O'Quinn checking with the refs. I think she's safe. Slides for that ball. Ooh. What a grab. That was London coming up with the catch while laying on the ground. Making it three versus four here. Ooh, big hit by Donch. Yeah, Donch calmly <laughs> taking that shot as O'Quinn was on the ground. Now Roe and Richie and Jessica O'Quinn. Roe going cross court. Wow. That was a big throw, taking out Cook. Cross court again. That one a little bit off the mark. Donch and Amezcula left in for the United States. And Amezcula coming to the line. Ooh. Looking for it. Not quite connecting. Yeah, they're trying to act fast before Canada gets the balls in hand. Doncha hits the foot. Oh, drops a possible wow. catch. Amezcua last in. She's going to look catch herself. Yeah! She grabs it off Richie. Oh, and he, she connects on the throw on O'Quinn. Big turnaround from Amezcua. Wow, wow. Would, she was probably the MVP of that match. <laughs> probably. That was a quite very exciting end to that game. Yeah, even though that was eight to four, I feel like so many of those points were so close. Just again, the Americans, I feel like under pressure, they came up clutch time and time again. They really wanted that win. They really wanted to go into tomorrow with at least a couple wins under their belt. Um, this does help them in the ranking, beating a team that beat some teams that beat them. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that that is important, and getting even that last point there could help with the point differential because I think you're right. If every team lost at least two games or maybe one game, it'll, it'll, it'll play out in the ranking for tomorrow. Yeah, we'll have to see on the standings how, how this ends up mattering. Um, I've lost track of the standings at this point, frankly. So. Yeah. <laughs> but we'll have to check those at some point between matches, see if we can bring you an update. But that was a very exciting game up until the last moment. And you're right, even though it felt like, even though it was 8-4, it felt neck and neck the whole time. That could very easily have been 5-4 or 4-4. That was a, a very close game. So uh, both teams, congratulations, great play. Next on this court is going to be the same two teams, but for the men's side, USA versus Canada. But next we'll have a player interview with Jake Mason and... Karina Amezcua from the United States. I'll hand it off to Jake now. Thanks so much. Or actually Christina, but either oh, way. Christina. <laughs> we will hand it off. Did we just, did I just walk behind you? Are we good? In just one moment. They're still getting set up. It looks <laughs> like they might have multiple people on this interview. Everyone wants to interview Karina yeah, <laughs> right she, now. <laughs> she's choosing to take some water before she answers that. That makes a lot of sense to me. She worked hard. I think the next game might just be just as exciting, Terry. I hope so. These are two teams that also have a big rivalry. A lot of these players play against each other all the time. And now it looks like we've got two interviewers with the Lucky Amazcua. So let's turn it over to Christina and Jake. end there yeah what were you thinking when they said <laughs> they said wait and you were like what um I was just thinking that you know my coaches my teammates everybody on the team always just tells me to follow my instincts tells me to just believe in what I can give yeah or what I have to offer so I was like you guys made this you guys are telling me to do this so you I just did. threw that ball and I know I told my coach Brittany I said no I'm not waiting but I just like girl you she dropped that ball told me to like, go. game set Oh, sorry. <laughs> so what was your strategy going into this game? It was just like, I feel like we always say, like, together. Our entire team is just together. We say that we need to protect each other. We say we need to avenge each other. If somebody gets hit, you're 
throwing right at them. You know, you're yes. taking care of your team, and that was our that was our strategy. Our strategy was just taking care of the people around us and loving each other, and that was the biggest thing. And you off the rush with that ball. Oh my god! Every single time. And then they started. They backed me up. <laughs> they made me not be able to do it a couple of times. I got a hit face shot at the end, and I was like, it's cool. I didn't want to play. And then um, Bree made that beautiful catch and brought me in. Yes. So I'm just very, very proud of my team. It's amazing. You guys did an amazing job. Do you have anything? So, <laughs> I mean, I know earlier in the day it was you guys in Malaysia, and that was a little bit rough for the team and team morale. And then, you know, the Mexico game got you guys up, but you guys seem pumped for this. Pumped. I mean, look at you right now. <laughs> look at this. I'm very happy. I think that the Malaysia team, um, Malaysia game also pumped us up because um, we were down, and then we were like, we need to turn this around. We need to do something better. There's something we need to do. And what we started doing was raising each other, like telling each other that we were good, we were going to be fine, and everything was going to be good. So I think the Malaysia game pumped us up, Mexico game pushed us, and then this one was just like epic. So this epic. is your last game around Robin? Yes. We're done today. Ooh, so we got to find out where you land. Who, do you, who are you hoping to go up against first? I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I, I'm just like happy to be here and happy to like face anybody. I keep saying, Can are we cheering? You? Oh, I thought oh, we were no. cheering. <laughs> I'm going to hand it to Sorry. you talk while I grab a special yes. guest while you guys can talk. So this is your first experience at Worlds. How do you feel? <laughs> you look like you're going to cry. <laughs> oh, no, don't make me cry now. Um, I'm just very honored to be here. I'm very honored to be a part of this team. I'm very honored to be with all the girls yeah. that are that I'm around. Are you going to cry? No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm yes, so are. proud of you. I'm very proud. You've always been somebody but that this pushed is me. What, this is what Dodgeball is family is about. <laughs> We watch each other grow and we watch each other get better and I've seen you. I've seen you I've seen you start at the very beginning. I've seen you I've seen you really try to manage your passion and stuff like that and you've done amazing. Oh yes. So manage I, my passion. That's, seen, that's, a, I, that's a good one. <laughs> you mean bring it down a little. Yeah, and it's beautiful. It is beautiful. And to see, you know, and to watch how you have come through, it's been amazing. This is crazy. You're awesome. You're I'm, awesome. I'm so congratulations. And we will oh. see you tomorrow. Yes. Hopefully my arm is fresh. You're going to be good, girl. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now what? And, and then I'm going to sneak in. Wait, before we stop. Go ahead, ladies. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm bringing in a couple special guest stars. Uh, Karina, great job. Great job. Thank you, Christina. Come on in here. I've got some reluctant, uh, reluctant guests here. But uh, here we go. You can take that. So with me... With me is, uh, he didn't even want to be on the camera, now he's making demands. Um, so uh, <laughs> with me is uh, Captain yes. Captain Jen Ritchie of the women's Canadian team, just coming off an amazingly intense game. That was intense. That was intense. And, uh, and our number one worldwide ref, Kale Harrell. The best in the world. Debatable. By none. Nobody debates this. The number one worldwide ref. Uh, I wanted to have a moment, take a special moment to bring in two people I absolutely love and share this with the world. Uh, we actually all played together. I was thinking that. I'm cheering for the U.S. in that, in that game because I, I have to. Of course. And then I'm like, wait, I was actually on a team with that one. And I was like, wait, and the ref was on a team. And it's kind of fun because we all play together all over the place. We fly to Detroit to play together. We go up to Canada to play together. We're here in L.A. We've been all over the world together, and these are just this is just one of the best things about dodgeball that I absolutely love. So I wanted to take one moment and share that with the world. Look how uncomfortable it's making him. I love it. But we like every year we always Jake and I always hold up a sign saying we love Kale because we do love Kale, and, and we, now he's actually here, so we can tell him in person. Look how much he hates this. We love you, Kale. We love you, Kale. All right. So now the game. Uh, how terrible was the refing? Are you asking him? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> like, don't ask the ref. I actually thought the refing was really great, as we had the best ref in the world. Um, no, I've, you know, calls go both ways. You know, refs can't see everything. But all in all, I thought it was a great ref, ref game. How was your experience, Jen, in that game? Uh, you play with and against these ladies a lot. I, I, I feel like you play against these ladies more than with. But yes. you play, uh, you know them, you're familiar with them. In that end, I, I saw Azalea. She was, she was ready for you. You got her. But she was ready for you because every time she went to throw, she knew she you knows. were gonna. She knows you. She knows I'm gonna counter. So what do you what do, do in that situation? Uh, well, like for example, in that one, I tried to mix it up. Like normally, I don't throw from my knees, so I thought she might not expect me to throw from my knees. 
Um, yeah, and it just happened to clip her on the foot. It, yeah, she she was Lucky ready, she but not not ready enough. So that was pretty awesome. Yeah. Uh, okay, Mister. How in your experience, you've been here working effortlessly. I mean, not effortlessly. Yeah, tirelessly. Definitely, tirelessly. Definitely a lot of effort. Yeah, lots <laughs> of effort. Tirelessly uh, for a few days. You volunteer so much of your time and and energy and effort into the sport. But um, as far as the world stage versus UDC versus uh, you know refing WeHo dodgeball, like. What is this like compared to the others? I mean, it's there. It, it feels like there's a lot more riding on it. It feels uh, the weight of it is a little bit heavier, but at the same time, um, the athletes are held to a much higher standard than your general rec league. Not to say that there are that they're monsters, dis that dis they're all monsters. People in Leo dodgeball, but um, when you're representing your country, there's a lot more on the line than just bragging rights. It's also you know, you'll, you'll be known worldwide as the cheater. Like you don't, you don't want to be that guy or that girl. Um, so yeah, so like, there's a lot more honesty. Um, but you know, there's there, there's still some close calls that uh, players can't see that refs have better angles on that still get argued. So you know, some things are still the same. So refing your your friends, your teammates, your family members, how does that uh, does that affect your social life? Um. Only when I'm scouting for Team USA. <laughs> Everyone's really nice to me then. Everyone's great for you then. <laughs> yeah. Until the team's announced. Th then they just don't talk to me anymore. It's I just got these two. Always and forever. I don't Always know and forever, she said, in case you couldn't pick that up. Because unfortunately, we don't have three mics. But I just, again, wanted to take a moment to give you guys the ref's perspective and bring in two of my favorite people. Thank you for an amazing game. Thank you for an amazing tournament. And we have to go back because we went over. Yeah, and Terry, I go and uh, yeah, you gotta go work. Bye, guys.